So you've heard of chemical reactions, and you know that they make up the basis of what we are studying. But what actually happens as a chemical reaction is occurring? To answer this, we need to delve deeper into the idea of collision theory. The first thing you need to understand is that chemical substances are being made up of millions of tiny particles, all moving around. Most of the time, these particles are just flicking around randomly, doing their own thing. But occasionally, something a little different can happen. These particles will collide with one another, and under the right circumstances, they'll stick together. This process of sticking together creates one of the most important concepts in chemistry, the product. While this sounds simple in theory, unfortunately, any old collision won't make the cut. There are a couple of conditions that must be met in order for the collision to occur successfully and create that all-important product. The first of these refers to the amount of energy the particles must possess. If you gently toss a water balloon against a wall, there's a good chance it won't explode. But you put all your might into slamming it on the ground and you've got yourself a pretty big cleanup. The same goes for a chemical reaction. In order to get the desired result, which in this case is the product, enough energy must be present in the particles. The amount of energy required varies between reactions and is commonly referred to as the activation energy. Too little activation energy, and the particles will simply bounce off one another, and leave no evidence of a reaction. As if this wasn't fussy enough, collision theory also cares about the orientation of the particles as they approach each other. Think about this like a baseball player aiming for a home run. If the batter hits the ball with the bottom of the bat, it will go straight to the ground and the pitch will grab it. If he connects with it too high, the ball will chip up for an easy catch. Hit it just in that sweet spot though, and the ball will travel for miles, probably. In a chemical reaction, the particles need to collide with each other at just the right orientation to create the force needed to turn reactants into products. Now in order for a reaction to occur, we don't just have one collision occurring. In fact, there are millions of particles colliding simultaneously. If there are many collisions occurring between particles in a short space of time, and the collisions meet these requirements, the reaction is said to have a high rate. This means everything is happening quickly, and the reaction goes to completion pretty fast. As the number of particle collisions decreases, the reaction rate is said to drop, until eventually there are no reactions occurring, and the reaction comes to a halt. At this point, the baseball players must pick up their water balloons and hope that enough product has been formed. 